Hi guys, let's get pumping and welcome back to VR Essentials where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality and your go-to place for any content about the HP Reverb G2. Today it's time for another awesome video where we're going to talk about how to optimize all those cool graphics and FPS for No Man's Sky. Hello, bonjour, hope you're doing well and welcome back for another video about No Man's Sky's graphics on the HP Reverb G2. Oof. That's right. And by the way, if you are new to the channel, very nice to meet you and a huge welcome back to all our regular viewers and subscribers because without you, this would just not make any sense whatsoever. So thanks for your continued support. So today's video is part two. If you want to go and check out part one, we spoke about all the structure and the workflow as to how to get you going to get those best graphics and FPS as possible. And today in part two, we're going to sprinkle that golden dust. I'm going to show you a little bit of behind the scenes tips and tricks as to how to optimize the graphics and really get that optimum boost to the cliff edge, as we could say, as much as possible. Awesome. All right, so now that in part one, we tweaked all the in-game settings as well as the actual Steam VR settings. Now what I usually do once I've done with those, I will go inside of the Nvidia control panel and start to test what works, what doesn't work, to try to optimize the graphics as much as I can with the HP Reverb G2. So let's go through this one by one. Okay, so the first thing is I'm actually going to select a program to customize and not use the global settings because of course, I wouldn't want to affect other VR experiences just in case. So starting from the top, image sharpening, I never want to sharpen it from here because it might create too much sharpness and also it doesn't necessarily make a difference. So I normally put this on off. For the anisotropic filtering, I always leave this in the application control. I don't generally, you know, use anything here because also it doesn't generally make any difference for VR anyway. Uh, for anti-aliasing FXAA, same thing. I don't want to have, you know, uh, jagged edges everywhere. FXSA generally is not recommended, so I leave this off. Anti-aliasing gamma correction doesn't really make a difference, so I leave this off. Anti-aliasing mode, same thing, doesn't really make a difference, so I leave to application control. And same thing for the anti-aliasing settings, doesn't make a difference. Anti-aliasing transparency doesn't make a difference, so I leave this on off as well. Background application max frame rates, normally I use global settings, which will be off. CUDA and low latency mode, I also use uh, global settings and put this on off because it generally doesn't make a difference either. Max frame rate, I will put this to 90 FPS just in case, of course, if you have another VR headset and you're watching this video or you're using 60 Hertz frame rate, then, you know, put it to 60 um, or whatever other FPS you normally have. Multi-frame sampling doesn't make a difference, so I leave this off. OpenGL rendering GPU, I will put this to global settings as well. For power management, I will also put this to preferred maximum performance because I don't want my graphics card to overheat and lose potential FPS. So preferred maximum performance is generally the best option for me anyway. So shader cache, I always put this on normally because it will cache all those textures and you know pixels and all these kind of things that you need. So normally I will put this on on. Texturing, filtering, sample optimization. Um, it doesn't really make a difference to be honest. So I'll put this on global, uh, global settings. Texture filtering, negative LOD. So Basically, it will texture, it will sharpen some of the textures for some apps. So just in case, I will put it on clamp because I will really want to clamp those pixels as po as much as possible. So I will put this on clamp for the best uh, performance as possible. For texturing filtering quality, I didn't find this actually created any huge improvement. So I put on high performance just in case and uh, not, you know, overheat the graphics card for nothing. Texture filtering, thrilling optimization, uh, thrill near, sorry, optimization. This doesn't make a difference, so I put on off. And then for threaded optimization, I put on use global setting. Triple buffering, use on global setting, which is off because it doesn't make a difference for me. And also for vertical sync, I always put this on off because it could create some stutter. So off all the time. And then for virtual reality pre-rendered frame, now this is what's interesting. When I put to interesting, sorry, when I put this to one, two or three, it will create some ghosting. So normally speaking, I will always put this on four just to, you know, it's a little bit of a compromise because it can eat some FPS. But for me, it really is the best, you know, setting as possible and the smoothness, smoother gameplay as much as possible as well. So I'll put this on four. All right, I'm going to show you some behind the scenes other stuff that I've done to get those FPS and also graphics to be the best as possible. 
The other trick that I recommend you to do is just go to your Mixed Reality headset display settings and then where you see experience options, change from best visual quality to optimize for performance. Now, what this is gonna do is basically get rid of the mirrored window on your computer or on your display when you're in virtual reality. So again, the computer can focus on one display, which is your VR headset and not two displays, which is the display of the Windows Mixed Reality and your headset at the same time. Please hold for a very important message. Once you've done that, go and search for game mode graphic settings and make sure that it is switched off because I found that game mode actually eats the frames per second. So be very aware of this. Then the other thing is go to graphic settings and make sure that hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is switched on because this is actually gonna help you to reduce some of the latency as well. And by switching it off, I did notice that there was actually more stutter inside of the, you know, the gameplay. And then finally, go to graphics performance preferences and then go to browse and search for No Man's Sky and then add it inside and then go to options and then click on high performance. This will also you know, help the actual computer to be able to make the gameplay that much little bit smoother. I'm not sure how much of a difference it makes, but you know, it's always good to have here and it doesn't create any stutter of any kind. If you find that it does, just you know, remove it. It's very much that simple, but for me, it actually helped, so all good. The number you have called is no longer in service. Just a quick note for those who are using an RTX 2070 or perhaps another card as well, that you know, for us Windows Mixed Reality users, we have a platform called OpenXR, which is supposed to help you to down the super sampling via the Windows Mixed Reality platform instead of doing it via SteamVR. Now, just to let you know that there are perhaps some videos circulating that where it works for some apps like, for example, Microsoft Flight Simulator, but after doing some heavy testing with this, it doesn't make any difference whatsoever for No Man's Sky. So honestly speaking, it might work if you have a 1080 perhaps, I don't know, leave a comment below, let us know your thoughts, do some experimenting of your own. That'd be great for the other community members to gain that feedback. For, for me with the RTX 2070, no difference whatsoever. So I don't bother with OpenXR. Reprojection is recommended, however, to be using this with the Windows Mixed Reality and HP Reverb G2. So if you wanna learn more about reprojection, go and check out one of the previous videos where we use Assetto Corsa Competizione as the example to do all the reprojection setup to leave a message, press one. Now in part one, we downside the super sampling on SteamVR to 50% just to see how much you know we could get at that level. And of course we did a comparison with 100% too. But in part two, I bumped it up all the way to 200% just to see what kind of feeling, what kind of gameplay and whether the computer could handle it. But as you can tell by the GPU temper and usage, you know, it's all in the red. There's no orange or green or whatsoever. So it's definitely dying there and I cannot, you know, run it at that kind of setting. And also I did get quite a lot of stutter. So it's very clear that unfortunately for SteamVR, I had to downsize it back down. But this was very good because I was able to get a gauge between 100% and 200%. So let's see what we can get, whether, you know, something in the middle could be a good compromise as well. If you would like to leave a callback number, press two. I found in fact that the best settings to use for the configuration that I used from video part one and today video part two was actually to bump up Steam VR super sampling to 130%. I didn't have any issues with stutter, the gameplay was very smooth and everything was rendered at top quality. And by the way, when I wasn't actually using OBS nor the FPS tool running from Steam, well, guess what? I was unable to actually bump up the volumetrics to enhance and also the post-processing to enhance as well. But during the recording, of course, with the OBS on and the FPS tool in Steam on, I could only put the volumetric to standard and also the post-processing to standard as well. So that's why it'd be good for you to know there. Peanuts, get your peanuts here. And then one important trick to try and get as much optimization as possible as well, is to make sure that you open No Man's Sky from your Windows Mixed Reality, then go into Steam VR and open it from there. Don't open your Steam program and then, you know, go to library and click play. Just don't do that because you don't want the Steam window to be open on your computer either. So if it's open, just close it. And believe me, it will already make a difference in your gameplay 
as well. So guys, if you want to find out more about the in-game settings that I use, do go and head out to video part one. And by the way, do make sure you're part of the notification squad by hitting that notification bell after you subscribe. So YouTube tells you in your video feed when I upload a new video, which will most probably be about comparing 90 Hertz with 60 Hertz refresh rate. So guys, thanks for watching today's video. I'll see you in the next video.